Hi, I'm Dale Etherington. Uh, we're here at TechCrunch talking about Google I.O. So day one of Google's developer conference kicked off today, and they had their keynote as well. So we were watching either there or via the live stream. I'm here with Kyle Russell and Greg Kampirek. So what did we think about Google's big show? It was good. That, uh, I think that's the best response possible. A measured, <laughs> a measured it was good. The keynote was a, a little bit you know, hit or miss. There was some parts. There were ups were, and there were downs. Good. Yeah. And the end was like a giant slope down. Yeah, it was kind of like, oh, check out this new version of Android. Check out what we're doing with wearables. And now we're going to talk for 45 minutes about cloud programming. And we will show you screenshots of text. <laughs> Everything. <Yeah. laughs> now, here's our new debugging tool. Wait, hold on. We're having some issues. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Cool. Like, <laughs> see, I thought you would be like most interested in that part because you actually have like some developer background and knowledge. Right? Yeah, but I mean, like analytics, it's something where it's like really useful for a developer. Yeah. But like, they don't need to see that thing. Like, they can look at those tools later because they're going to be fiddling with it for hours right. or days. They don't like that. Could have been a slide saying, "Oh, check out the new analytics program when you go look in Google App Engine." Yeah, and even they, and even they were like, I mean, the the audience response to that stuff was not. Like it wasn't like effervescent. They weren't like, oh, this is great. But later they said, I overheard people talking about it, and they were like, the cloud compute stuff looks really good. No, that's the thing. Like at, I think Microsoft does a better job of making those things exciting. Mm -hmm. Like you'll go to build, and Microsoft will be like, and check out these new analytics built into Windows and Windows Phone apps, and it's just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I feel like it was mostly had to do with how Google was presenting it. Yeah. Um, they, sort of it dry. Was, yeah, yeah. No, and it was very like. Bear, like here's the facts, like yeah. telling to you bullet by bu bullet almost. And I think it was just kind of yeah, like almost too dry. Right. Yeah, and it didn't help that a protester jumped into the middle of the uh, two the, protesters, the, yeah, the cloud demonstration, kind of threw them off their game a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So not one but two protesters during that keynote. So yeah. uh, I mean, thoughts there were my thoughts were like how how is this possible? You know, like they had they had a lot of security around, but I guess they they were possibly paid developers that had had maybe I didn't notice badges on either of them. So I didn't notice I badges they, either. Really did. You were talking about how the new Android stuff was exciting at the beginning, and yeah. I thought that was very exciting. I thought their design choices, the way they've gone with this new material, what's it called? Something material, material design, right? This is material. Yeah, yeah, design material or what, reverse one of the two. But <laughs> uh, but they they were a little bit. Like they were talking about it, and they were talking about it as if it's like it's a it's a three D surface. And at first, I was I was I thought they were literally saying. I think everyone in the audience did they, too. They, they show like, like the screen surface like moving. I was yeah. like, yeah. what? We're making <laughs> a physical tactile display. Yeah, yeah. But it, that's not what they were making. <laughs> they were just they were just using that as like a shortcut to talk about this new design language. Yeah, right? it's like when you touch like something in a menu, like there'll be a ripple effect mm -hmm. where like it. You're literally like leaving an impact on the interface when you touch it. Yes. Like, it's not really like touch it and all of a sudden like the screen's reacting to that touch. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, I it's like, like I like the intro though because it had it had the screen. It was rippling. It's like, what if your screen had depth and could react and move <laughs> to your every <laughs> interaction? Like, yes. <laughs> yeah. The guy in the back's like, yeah. And he's like, well, you can't do that. But <laughs> we have shadows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it does look pretty. It does uh, look very very pretty. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I think it's neat that they're doing this new like cross platform. Approach where the one design is supposed to work on all, right? And it'll yeah. adapt to different displays from smartphones all the way up to televisions and, and back down again. So yeah. that's kind of cool. I like that Google is following, not following the Apple Playbook because they, there's no way they copied that in less than a month, but you know, it's going with you'll have the same design language across your platforms if you stay within the Google ecosystem. And you'll be used to like how apps look and work, but it's not like the Windows approach where it's literally the same, the same interface. Thing. It's yeah. adopting like the same style so you know what cues to go with when bouncing from one app on like one device to another, like the same app on a different You recognize device. that they're the, right. they serve the same function, but and like the the experience is continuous, not the literal usage. Yeah. It's yeah. not the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, I prefer that approach. No, and it definitely seems like they put a lot of time and thought into into how that would work and like how a, a smartwatch interface and a smartwatch app should differ from a smartphone one and a smart TV one and, and all the way through, right? I think the big problem, and they kept emphasizing that it's very easy for developers to do this, right? But I, I wonder how easy it actually will be for a developer to build an app that works across uh, TVs, you know, smartwatches, connected appliances, whatever else, wherever else Android happens to appear, um, you know, how much extra time that will actually result in uh, in the development cycle. I'd, I'd be curious to, to talk to some developers and find that out. Yeah. Um, something else I'm interested in. Uh, did you pay much attention to Android TV 
uh, after the keynote? Did you go check it out? Uh, very, very briefly. I, yeah, I want to take a longer look. I'm pretty interested in it. I spoke to a couple developers and someone from Google, and uh, developers will actually be able to register to get an Android TV dev kit today for free. And Does that include hardware? It, yeah, it comes with a hardware and a hardware controller. Um, for the like game. A, a game controller. Ah. Um, but what's interesting is, is Google's not going to require its partners with Android TV to include a controller. So it seems like there's going to be like gaming focused ones yeah. and then media consumption focused well, ones. Well, they mentioned Razer was building a set-top right. box for it. So, so I feel like there's definitely going to be like a higher performance model available at some point yeah. that'll actually be like gaming centric. Yeah. I'm intrigued by that. Well, that combined with the news that they were trying to build these console quality graphics uh, or PC quality graphics um, using the, the the Android stuff, right? The Android L. Do you believe that? Do you buy that? See, the thing is, is that is something where, like, I tweeted during the live stream, you know, this seems like something where it's Google is, like, positioning to game developers, like, yeah, no, like, Metal is on iOS, which right. is, for those who don't know, Metal is an API that lets you access more down to the Metal, like, the graphics processing unit on an iPhone or an iPad and get much better performance. Yeah. Um, and the, you can't really do the exact same thing on Android because there's so many different hardware configurations available mm -hmm. that you're not going to be able to say, like, okay, you can only use these specific um, down to the metal APIs because, like, you can't build those for everything that could be yeah. running Android. Um, so performance might be better, but I have a feeling that the real gains are going to come from better and better hardware showing up on mobile, not the, like, software innovation that Google's rolling out in their developer kit. Right. I think they signaled that by mentioning NVIDIA multiple times yeah. when they were discussing. So that's like their key hardware partner there, right? And yeah. NVIDIA and its focus on, on mobile graphics chips um, and processors, right? Yeah, no, and that's been something for a couple of years where yeah. like Tegra has always been right. like, oh, oh, this is the gaming it's GPU for Android devices. And, yeah. and the thing about that is, is that hasn't really taken off very much. I no. feel like it always gets attention at events, but it when it comes down to it, I don't devices. think that's actually a selling point, right? Yeah. Um, Anything else that you you particularly like? Yeah. I, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool, and it's it's the funny, the goofiest thing ever. But it's a cardboard virtual reality headset. I mean, you need to bring your own phone. But it's so you know every year Google does this thing at the keynote where they, they give away things to developers. And in previous years, it's been Chromebooks and yeah, and, sixteen hundred dollar uh, computer and phones. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and this year, and they eventually let people know, oh, we're giving you watches too. But this time they're like, we're giving you cardboard. <laughs> and some guy in the way back, the audience just goes. <laughs> they but didn't explain, give any context at all. None, none at all. And it, like, they didn't even tell you what it was until you walked out and folded it, unfolded yeah. it yourself. But it turns out that it's, you know, you rip it open, you, you fold it up, and it's this little uh, kind of faux Oculus Rift, like a poor man's Oculus Rift. Uh, you what did you call it earlier? Said, uh, tell the, everyone. The Moculus Thrift. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I told that to Hugo Barra, by the way, yeah. and he loved it. <laughs> he loved it. He thought it was hilarious. I credited you. So, yes. Yeah. Um, but my favorite part about it, and it seems kind of silly, but this right here, it's the last thing you put in. It's a little magnetic switch. It's, it's, so when you're looking around, you can interact with things in the game. You can click on uh, UI elements or whatever just by sliding this. And all that is is a, magne or a magnet. And then the magnetometer in your phone uh, senses the magnetic change between the two magnets and they're being pulled apart. And that's just so damn clever. That's really, really cool. Wow. And then I like how they've got like... The like standard cardboard box. Like. <laughs> yes, this is recyclable. Yeah, because <laughs> this this is this was the this the, the product is its packaging. Yeah, it came just like this. It's very it's it's quite clever. It's also perhaps a bit insulting. Yeah, no. And we we talked about this briefly, where it's you know they're like, oh, see, Oculus is just a camera strapped to your face or a smartphone strapped to your face. But it's like, well, yeah, but they've invested millions of dollars and years into making it so you don't get nauseous while using it. And yeah. Like when you're in a virtual reality environment, it feels like you're your actual height. Yeah. And that it's just like. No, they didn't mention Oculus or anything. Just, yeah. But no. It was kind of, it was like a subtweet. It was like an in-person version Oculus of a subtweet. Oculus probably does have to be a little bit annoyed because because of the resolution of the screen. When you hold it up to your eyes, you actually don't get the screen door effect that you get with the Oculus. You can see every single individual. Person. Oh right, yeah. and in future versions of the Rift, you know, there's, there's going to be much higher resolution screens, so you're not going to get that there either. But yeah. for most people, when you hold up this compared to that, compared to the original release, it's actually of, optically of the Rift, superior. It's, yeah, yeah. It's just just a little bit, but enough that you might be like, ah, oh, this actually this little cardboard thing actually looks a little, little bit better. Yeah, and it's really the phone. So it's going like, right <laughs> for this on eBay tomorrow, what do you think? I have, I have no idea. Fortunately, Google is, <laughs> as long as you can get into I.O., Google's like, take on. They're them. handing them out a ton. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Okay, so. so what's the reason for handing that out, though? No, it's just shade. It's yeah. A, it's 100% <laughs> shade. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. 
But they were, they were, they were, they were, they had them right next to the Project Tango booth. So perhaps they didn't even talk about Project Tango on stage. Yeah, or Glass. Or Glass, or the mod, uh, Project Ara. Mm -hmm. So with this, Google actually is, or today, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, released an SDK so that people can uh, continue to build apps for this. OK. Um, and I think with that, maybe if people embrace it, they might release a cheap VR headset of their own. I, yeah, I, this with plastic would be, you know, it would still be incredibly cheap, and yeah. it would be really, really cool. Um, I don't know if you remember the interactive story that showed up one day for Moto X users um, mm -hmm. after its release. But basically, it was like an augmented reality game where you could move around and see like a story that like is moving, and you have to follow it around with your phone. Mm -hmm. um, they actually had a booth of several of those games uh, on display. I forget which floor it was on. Um, but I have a feeling that it might be related to that also, yeah. where they're experimenting with like using your phone at like maybe eventually Google will have something where you just drop your phone in, and that's the solution for not VR full on, but like some kind of augmented reality setup. Something yeah. uh, affordable and attainable to all. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I think uh, that about does it for, for at least my emotions on day one. <laughs> but um, thanks for joining us. And we'll be back uh, with more news from I.O. tomorrow for day two.